How's it going ladies and gentlemen? For today's video, we're gonna be going over 20 plus adjustments that you must make in your BMW. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, Beam Review, what we do here is showcase all the latest BMWs. We also do some really cool tips and tricks, how-to videos, and even some reviews. So if that's something that you wanna stay in tune with, subscribe to this channel because we put out content every single week. For today's video, we're gonna be going over all the different adjustments that you can make in your BMW and even ones that you definitely should consider doing. Stay tuned for the whole thing because we're gonna be covering many of these that you may not even know about. Also, before we get started, we are in a brand new BMW X5. And also, if you all do have x5 and you're looking for all season mats check out this link right down below from amazon.com people are buying these like crazy and for this winter that we're going into it is definitely going to be a must buy and let's not forget that these are all season mats and you can use these year round the link for that is going to be right down below so check it out at the end of the video and without further ado let's go ahead and get started we're going to be going through the basics so first off and foremost we're going to be going over all the different seating controls and how you can adjust them but one thing to keep in mind is that as soon as you get your bmw one of the biggest things that you want to make sure is that you set up your my bmw app and more important than that is that you must set up a bmw driver profile or a bmw id depending on which i drive you have the reason why it is super important to do your bmw profile or your bmw id before you even begin to do these adjustments whatever adjustments that you do save will save to your profile or your bmw id and that is super super important so that you never have to go around and redo all these so if you haven't already set up your bmw profile or your bmw id and then go ahead and set up all your settings so for this one we are going to jump out into the snow as you can see ice cold beer and we're going to check out the seating controls now it's pretty basic i will say and i will mention that this bmw x5 does have the multi-contour seating hence why there's extra buttons here and here and here don't worry about those too too much but the buttons that all the x5s and many of the bmws will have are going to be these adjustments here you can go front back you can go up and down but this one right here yes you can tilt forward and backward now all that is pretty basic but the biggest one that i want to mention while we're here is for the headrest for bmws you are going to see buttons either here or right down here depending on whichever bmw you have and if yours has a bmw right on the side of the headrest what that button will do is simply move the headrest front to back and if you have the button right down here that one is obviously the one that you can hold down and move your headrest up and down but as you can see for this x5 right here there is no button right down here nor right up here so you might be questioning how do we adjust this headrest well the way that we do that is simply you would go to this switch right here and you have to push this one up in order to adjust the headrest let me demonstrate that one more time so as you can see i am pushing this up and that will move the headrest as you can see the rest of these adjustments are pretty straightforward this one is obviously for your lumbar support which is the same thing as your lower back support and this guy right here this hot dog switch hot is basically dogs, to control the bolstering or or these guys right here and right there it basically adjusts the squeeze onto your body many of the bmws they do have this additional thigh support here now this bmw again does have the multi-contour seating so the adjustment for that is going to be right here and right here to move that but if your vehicle did not have the multi-contour seating package no worries there is a handle that would be located right down here which you can push in and then pull forward or backward so those are all the ways that you can adjust the seat now once you have your seating all set don't just go ahead and save your set one or two yet because there are a couple other things that can be saved to that as well so now that we have our seating all set another thing that you must adjust and of course this is pretty basic as well but obviously you can adjust your side mirrors as well now bmw does have a pretty confusing controller here but the selector switch for the left or right mirror is going to be this guy right here and of course you can use this dial right here to adjust the side mirror however you want once you have your side mirrors all set then you're pretty much good to go but if your bmw has a powered steering that can also be saved to your set one and two as well now the way that you can tell if the bmw has powered steering or not is right down here there is a switch if your bmw has a switch like this it does mean that you do have a powered steering wheel but many bmws that do not have the powered steering you would see a handle right down here which you can pop out and then you can adjust your steering wheel however you want whether you want to push in or out or up or down but yes once you have your steering wheel all set and again if you have a powered steering wheel all set then now you can go ahead and hit set and then one and that will save to the first seating position many will question about the top mirror here and i will say that for all bmws it is still completely manual there is no powered rear view mirror just yet but again yes that is completely manual now the next thing you must adjust or make sure is going to be this little guy right here where we have our headlight controls now for the most part you definitely just want to make sure that it is an auto so if you do get a brand new bmw and for whatever reason it's not an auto just simply hit the auto switch 
and then it will go into auto. One of the biggest adjustments that many do make is gonna be this little dial right here. Now this little dial controls the brightness on the screens, but as you can see, I am moving it and it is not doing anything. The reason why it is not doing anything is simply because it is too bright out. The headlights are not on. And so therefore, you cannot use this during the day. I would highly recommend adjusting the brightness at nighttime because that's when it will work. Another thing you must adjust for in regards to the headlights is gonna be your automatic high beams. Now this BMW is a iDrive 7 model, hence why there is a automatic high beam button right over here. At nighttime, when it, whenever your headlights are on, simply hit this and then once you do that, you will see another green headlight pop up here with the A beside it. That's how you know that your automatic high beams are on. If you have iDrive 8, you simply just go into your settings, type in automatic high beams, and then just check off the box to make sure that that is on. By default, if your vehicle comes from the factory, you do have to enable it first, but once you do it, then you're all set. This next one is quite funny, but you'd be surprised how many people do not know how to control their vents. Now, BMWs, as soon as they come from the factory, or if you do hop into a brand new one, as you can see, the vents are actually closed. Now, the way that I can tell is by, if I look at the scrolling knob, there are little black dots here. Now, if I do go ahead and adjust it, if, if I bring that up, you can see that there's more black dots indicating that the vent is open. So you do wanna make sure that all the vents are open whenever you get into your brand new BMW, because many times these vehicles, whenever they do arrive from the factory, the vents are closed or maybe half open. So you definitely just wanna make sure that you start your vehicle whenever the vents are fully open. Another great adjustment to make is gonna be on your instrument cluster. Again, this BMW does have iDrive 7. So we do have a BC button right down here. If I go ahead and push that, you can change your mini screen that you see right there on the right side. So there are different ways that you can adjust this by default. The one that we would see all the time is gonna be this one that shows the total miles right over here but you can feel free to change it to whatever you like. Again, my favorite one is probably gonna be the music one that we just passed. But yes, the music one is something that I like, but you can feel free to adjust that however you like. And now staying on the instrument cluster as well, there is a way that we can customize this middle screen, at least a little bit. Now, as you can see by default, we are gonna see a map here. There is a way that you can disable that map if you find that too, too distracting. If you do go into your settings, go down to where it says car, and then go into where it says settings. Once you go into settings, go all the way over to where it says displays. And then as you can see, we have our instrument panel right over here. The function that you wanna go into is central display area. And then as you can see by default, it is set to map view. You can adjust it to either route preview or assisted driving, but many like to keep it nice and simple. So I'm simply just gonna turn that off. Once I turn that off, as you can see, things are nice and neat now and much more easy to read. This next one is gonna to have to pertain to the head up display. Now, as we can see, or sort of see, we have, do have our head up display right over there. If you didn't already know, you can adjust the height for your head up display. The way that you do that is simply go back into that displays menu. So the way that we get there is you go into car, you go into settings, and then you go in, into displays. Once you go into displays, you would go into head up display. And here you can adjust your head up display to whatever settings you want. You can adjust the brightness, you can adjust the height, which is what I think is gonna be the most important one that you must adjust. But as you can see, you can change the height of your head-up display to either something higher or lower. And that is something that you may wanna consider if your BMW came with a head-up display. The next one is gonna to have to pertain to the safety settings. Again, for this one, if you have iDrive 8, you can simply just go into your settings and do the same thing if you search. This BMW X5 does have this little green guy right here, which simply just pertains to intelligent safety. If you go into here, you can see that all the safety features, they're all on but there's always one that we do tend to turn off a whole lot. If you go into configure, you can see what your safety features are. Now, the biggest one that people are really, really iffy about or not sure about, I guess you could say, is gonna be this lane departure steering intervention. If you don't know what that is, if you're driving normally on the road and if you happen to go outside the lane without using your blinker, then the steering wheel will actually nudge you back into the lane. Many like that, many do not, but if you are somebody who does not like that, you can simply just turn off that feature. And then by doing that, the vehicle will not nudge you back into the lane. It is probably one of the most adjusted features that I've seen happen in these BMWs with iDrive 7. And also if you do have iDrive 8, there is a button to turn off lane departure within the settings as well. The next adjustments are gonna go right down to your climate control settings. My recommendation on what the best way to use climate control is simply just to make sure that it is set to auto. Once it is set to auto, the only thing that you really have to worry about is simply the fan speed, which I do like to keep either right in the middle or at the lowest one, depending on the weather. But now the only thing that you really have to adjust is simply just the temperature here. You don't have to go playing through your directionals or anything at all. Simply just keep it in auto 
and then you can adjust your temperature just like your house. Another big adjustment that I do recommend doing for many of my BMW customers is as we can see right here, there is no sync button. So what you could do is you could program, say for example, number eight to be your sync button. The way that you would do that is right over here, you see where it says menu, simply go into menu and that brings up the menu for climate control settings. As we can see synchronized right here, it is already on. But let's just say for example, if we messed up our temperature on this passenger side and if we wanted both of them to sync, simply just click and hold the number eight to program this button to become the synchronize. Once you hear the beep, that's how you know that this number eight is set to synchronize the two temperatures. Now, simply if, we, if we're on our home screen, all you have to do to sync these two temperatures is obviously just press number eight and then you're all set. This next one is gonna go to your programmable buttons that we have here. Now I actually put up a video on this so if you guys wanted to check all the 25 different ways that you could program all these programmable buttons simply check out that video at the end of this video and then you can see all the different ways that i recommend setting up these programmable buttons if you have a bmw that has iDrive 8 which is the brand new os system all you would have to do for your screen is simply swipe from the top to the bottom and then you would actually see a shortcuts menu pop up right over here which almost works the same way as setting up a shortcut right down here as well so definitely check that out if you have a bmw that has iDrive 8. these next few ones are going to be very software related so we're going to deep dive right into the iDrive 7 that we have here again many of these features they also work for iDrive 8 and i know that i keep rambling about iDrive 8 but we are in a really weird time with bmw because we are in the transition phase going from iDrive 7 vehicles to iDrive 8. So apologies for that. But yes, many of these features that you may want to consider changing is say for example, BMW has a setting within the vehicle where you can fold in your mirrors whenever you lock the car. By default, you do have to enable it first. The way that you do that is simply go into car, go into where it says settings, and then simply go all the way over to where it says doors and vehicle access. Once you go into that, scroll all the way down. And then as you can see here, it is not checked off by default. So you want to check this on and then now whenever we lock our vehicle it is simply going to fold in the mirrors as well so nobody can bump into those this next one can be very very crucial if you have a small garage so if you do have a small garage or one that has a very low height pay attention to this one if you go into car there is a way that you can adjust your trunk height by default bmw's trunk heights are set to the highest level which is number five but you can drop it down by four different levels for that too simply go into settings and then go again to where it says doors and vehicle access. If you go all the way up, you would see tailgate right over here. And as you can see, we do have our opening height set to the highest level. So this is something that you can adjust going down four different heights. Again, this is great if you are somebody who is short or if you may have a small garage so that your tailgate will not hit the top of the garage. The next one is a really cool one. If you like music or the sound of your vehicle, one thing I will mention is that this BMW X5 does have the Harman Kardon sound system which if you are in the market for that it is a truly spectacular system and i would highly recommend getting it if you are on the fence of getting it but this next one is going to go to our volume settings or tone settings now the way that i would recommend going into there is simply go into media and then as you can see we have our media menu right over here if you scroll or tilt all the way over to the right side and then go all the way down you're going to see sound settings here now if you go into sound settings you can see that your surround sound is on and all this is set to the middle. I personally love bass, so I do like to crank up my bass a whole lot. So that is something that you may want to adjust if you are someone who is very, very particular about their sound. So for the newer BMWs too, they have equalizer where you can fine tune all your different EQ in the system as well. For this next one, we're going to go back into settings again, but this next one has to pertain to how you unlock the doors. Now I have mentioned this probably three, four times. So I do apologize for my subscribers for sounding like a broken record in this, but it, it is a really common question that we still get till this day. By default, if you hit the unlock button on your key fob, it will only open the driver's side door. If you wanna open the passenger door along with the rest of them, you simply have to click on it twice. One, two. And then by doing that, it would open all the doors, but there is a setting within the vehicle where simply if you just press unlock once, it will open all doors. The way you get there is simply go back into car and then go into settings. And then scroll all the way over to where it says key button settings, which is going to be this very last one here. Once you go into that, you can see right here that it's set to just the driver's side door only. We want to make it so that whenever we unlock the door, we want to do it for all doors. This is great to do if you have a family that tends to get into the vehicle all at one time. So then that way you simply just have to click on your key fob once. Another great one to mention, and this can be done for iDrive 7 or iDrive 8. 
But both of the systems, they have widgets, as you can see right over here. There's ways that you can adjust these widgets to whatever you like, and you can rearrange them to however you like it as well. If you simply just click and hold on whichever widget, it brings up a customization screen. Here, you can add a widget, you can delete a page, but the way that you would simply adjust the widget is simply just click on it, and then you can choose from a list of many of these other widgets that you can choose from. And again, you can rearrange these to whatever you like as well. As mentioned before, you can also delete the widgets if you don't like them. But yes, BMW iDrive 7 does let you allow up to 20 plus different pages of widgets. So definitely have fun with that and adjust it to however you like. The next feature is gonna be comfort access. If you don't know what comfort access is, it does pertain to how the vehicle's doors can unlock themselves. Now by default for all the vehicles, you do have to enable this inside the system, but what comfort access is, let's just say for example, if your BMW senses your key fob getting really close to the car, it can unlock the doors all by themselves and vice versa as well. Because if the BMW detects that the key fob is walking away from the vehicle, it can also lock the doors all by themselves as well. The way that you would do that is again, once more, go in the car and then go into where it says settings, go all the way over to where it says doors and vehicle access. Once you're in that, you're gonna see this third one right down here where it says comfort access. As you can see by default, it is not checked on. You do have to go in here and enable this. But yes, you can have the vehicle unlock whenever it senses the key fob getting close or lock whenever it senses the key fob going away from the vehicle. This next one is one of my favorite ones because you can change the interior lighting within the vehicle. As you can see for this one right now, it is set to blue. We have a line going down here. We have a line here. We have a line there and even on the door handle as well. This vehicle does have a skyline, so we can't see it right now, but these little dots at night, they glow up blue as well. Now there's two ways that you can change your interior lighting. One really cool way is by telling voice command, change my ambient lighting to green. I've selected the lighting color green with contour and green. As you can see, the lighting color just changed and then I told BMW's voice command to do that. You can also tell BMW's voice command to roll down the window as well. So yes, definitely utilize voice command for many of your car functions, it can do it. But if we did wanna go into the settings where it shows all the interior lighting, simply just go into car and then go into settings and then go all the way over to where it says interior lighting. Once you're in there, here's where you can see all your different colors that you can choose from. Again, iDrive 7 is limited to these selection of colors. iDrive 8 users, you guys, you all do have a much more broader selection of all these different colors and shades that you can choose from. But yes, interior lighting is something that you may wanna adjust. You can adjust the brightness for it as well. You can also have it dim at nighttime if it's something that you may think might be distracting you. This next one has to do with adjusting ride height. Now this BMW X5 does not have it, but if your BMW did have the option to adjust its ride height, you see a controller switch here, and I will also post up a picture on what this looks like. And there's five different levels that you can choose from. By default, it is always gonna be set to the middle one, but you can raise it up by two notches. You can also lower it by two notches as well, depending on what type of situation you're in. This is a big, big question that people do Google a whole lot. But one of the key things to note about the ride height for BMWs is that, is that once you go past about 15 to 20 miles per hour, it does adjust back to its normal ride height. Unless you're in a sport, then it will drive one, one notch below the standard height. So that is one quick thing to note. You can't drive, say for example, going 50 miles per hour in a height that's too low or too high. It is meant to be used for lower speeds, so definitely keep that in mind. A couple different scenarios where you might wanna adjust the ride height, say for example, if you do have snow on the ground and then you feel that you may wanna raise the height, you can raise the height to do that. If you're going off-roading, you can also raise the height so you have more ground clearance. A couple of reasons where you might wanna lower the height is say for example, if you had a big box that you're trying to load into your vehicle, that also helps. Or if grandma had a hard time trying to get into the vehicle too, you can lower the height so then she will love you and she will also love your BMW a whole lot more. So that is definitely a key reason. Next up, we're gonna talk about Hello BMW. If you do not know what Hello BMW is, it's simply a way to activate BMW's voice command completely hands-free. Again, by default, this feature is off. You have to go ahead and go into the settings and then enable it first. For iDrive 7 users, go into car, go into settings, and now a little tricky, you wanna go into where it says general settings. Once you're in there, go down to where it says voice control. As we can see, voice control is right over here. Wake word is gonna be right over here as well. And you simply just wanna make sure that this feature is enabled. Just check that off. And then now whenever you say hello BMW, it is not gonna do it for me because I don't have my driver profile set up. Shame on me. Loser. But yes, you can also customize that to whichever name as well. So you could even rename it as saying hello Alfred 
and then voice command will pop up. And then again, you can tell your voice command to do anything you want within the vehicle, such as change the temperature, turn on the heated seats or turn on the heated steering wheel. This next one is something that I do with every single BMW as soon as I hop into it. All the BMWs these days, they all come with navigation, but for some reason, BMW does have their navigation where the arrow just simply just goes in all different directions. I personally do not like that at all. So I like to keep a nice bird's eye view of my navigation. If you wanna adjust that, click on this little compass that's right down here on the lower left. And then once you cycle through it, you can get this cool 3D view, but one that comes right after it, which is gonna be a nice bird's eye view, is what I definitely prefer. Now the arrow will stay straight, and then it'll make using the BMW navigation much more easy. This next one is crucial if your BMW has a drive recorder. If you're not sure what a drive recorder is, you can pretty much say, for example, the BMW would have a dash cam built into the camera system. If you wanted to have a drive recorder inside your BMW, you also do have to get the parking assistance plus pa package because it does require all four cameras to be active in order to have the drive recorder. But this one's really, really crucial. If you do have a drive recorder, stay, stay tuned for this one because this could be something that could save your life. Now, the drive recorder, now for this BMW, it's not currently set up yet, but if you do go into your BMW apps, you will see drive recorder here. Now, the biggest thing to mention about the drive recorder is that it does have the function where, say for example, if the airbags go off within the BMW, it can record 20 seconds prior to the accident and 20 seconds right after it. But by default, that feature, where it can automatically record is not on, you do have to go into the drive recorder and then you do have to enable that. So the easiest way to do it is simply go into your BMW installed apps. You will see drive recorder there, go into there, go into the settings, and then there is a way to set up the whole feature so that it records 20 seconds prior to the accident and 20 seconds right after it. And again, the trigger for that is whenever the airbags go off. The reason why I would highly recommend setting this up is that say for example is simply because you would have video evidence of the whole accident and by having that if there was ever a situation where the accident would turn into a court case you would definitely have the advantage and you also have a nice peace of mind as well these are all the adjustments that i would recommend doing in your bmw as soon as you get into it again these adjustments were in iDrive 7 but you can also do many of these in iDrive 8 so keep that in mind if you do have one of the brand new bmws and again just to make sure you all know definitely make sure you have your bmw id or profile set up first before you do any of these at all the reason why again as mentioned at the beginning of the video was simply because by doing all these adjustments it will save to your profile or your bmw id and then so that you won't have to redo them all over again so definitely make sure you set up your bmw id profile first again before i let you go if you do have a bmw x5 check out the all season mats right down below the amazon link is going to be in the comment section and in the description so definitely check that out that is all that i have for you guys today if you have any questions write it down below i would be more than happy to help you out take care and have a great day